Welcome everybody, it's Mike Newton back in the Swing Steward here at Lynn Golf Academy. We've got another PXG Iron review and this time it's the uh, 311T. Okay, so this is the T stands for the tour version. So this club's very much inspired by the PXG staff players on tour. It's obviously a very, uh, it's a smaller compact head of the three irons that PXG are offering. So a little bit smaller squat sort of head shape, a little bit thinner on the top line, more of a true blade style or blade size of actual club head. Having said that, as per all the irons that PXG offer, it's actually a hollow design. Okay, so most of the blades out there, other brands, is just literally a blade, a slither of metal, and that is um, that is it, which obviously can make it less forgiving on off centre hits. Um, this is still hollow, so it's still inserted or injected with the thermoplastic elastomer uh, material there, which makes it, which basically can save a little bit of weight, and again, this high density. Uh, bolts that are positioned around the back of the head which gives that a bit, a bit of an industrial sort of look there um, You either like that or you don't that's just a visual thing But basically what is that that's doing the, the tungsten inserts here is pulling weight away from the uh, Center of the head so more around the perimeter. So yes, it is a blade head. It is small and compact It does look like a blade when you present it down by the golf ball. I'll show you some um, plain position images soon um, but PXG is saying this is a fairly forgiving iron, so we're going to test that. No doubt, I'll miss the middle of the club face at some point today. Um, so we'll we'll, give, we'll put that forgiveness to the test here, and I'll give you a little bit of feedback as to how that sort of feels. I've not actually hit this one yet, not even landed my hands. Okay, I've done the review of the middle uh, iron, which is a three double one iron, which I'll put a link up here. You can go and watch that out. Go and check that out. Um, but we're going to do the the T version, the tour version. Okay, so thinner sole. Um, so helping to sort of shape shots with this more shallower angle of attack there uh, Obviously a more compact squat club face uh, position or club head um, shape and size there So again helping with with workability a little bit more Penetrating ball flight here the loft on this 7 iron is the weakest loft of the three models to do Which is generally what you'll find in more of the players iron which is at 32 degrees for a 7 iron so um, it's still a little bit strong. I think some blades out there you may see at 34 degrees, um, but it's by no means obviously strong. Okay, with the hollow design there, obviously it's um, it's laser milled inside. The elastomer goes in, and then there's a very thin uh, what PXG are claiming is the is the world's thinnest club face for an iron that goes on. So really helping on ball speed there, um, trying to get that to maximum distance as well as the playability of a. a that you'd expect from a forged iron. Obviously it is forged, um, so we're gonna hit some shots with this, gonna give you a little bit of feedback and see uh, see maybe some numbers on GC2 and how that sort of, uh, how that works out. Okay, so just a closer look at the head here, so you can see it's the 0-3-1-T head here, so very similar to the look of the other two heads, so all three heads look the same from this particular view at the back, with obviously the bolts around the back, they all look like a blade, but I think it's when you flip it to the sole here, this is a slimmer sole of the three. As you can see, this is our fitting iron, so hence the little screw section there. So this is a thinner sole of the of the three irons to help on workability and shot shaping. If we just pop it down into a playing position, okay. So very sort of uh, mid to slim top line there, very little offset on the actual blade there, and it's quite squat blade length from the heel to the toe. So real classic looking sort of iron here. Okay, just another little view here, just at the back of the golf club. It's a really nice finish on the club face here. Okay, so we're going to hit the first shot here. Okay, as I say, when you put that down by the golf ball, it is quite a small, compact head here, so very much a traditional blade look. Let's give this one a hit. Yeah, it feels really solid off the club face. It's, it's there's definitely a lovely sound to the to the strike. It's not um, it's obviously not loud, which you wouldn't expect that from a from a bladed forged sort of head. Um, it's a very sort of muted sound, but it does feel good. In another one. That feels 
feels really soft, really soft. So here's the second shot with the tow head. First one was a lovely draw, second one was pretty much identical. Right, nearly on the line, perfect. So that was 172 carry. Okay, so we just hit shot number three. Do like the look of this, it just looks very clean and classic behind the golf ball. Oh, that's a little bit pulley. Great strike, just a bit pulley that one. Again, carried at 170. 170 that one. Okay. just feels incredible and I'm not just saying that it just feels really soft sweet muted sound again 170 carry there it's a very consistent hit and golf club at the moment from what I can see a little bit low in the face there but still felt pretty good I knew and missed middle 174 carry but it's visually in its flight it's still got up out and away there which sometimes you might expect from a more bladed traditional club if you hit it low in the face it's one of those where the, the fingers are going to ready you know ready to sort of drop off there that didn't feel like that still felt pretty solid Well, that was a bit thin as well. But again, that's up and out there. Yeah, about just over 170 carry, really consistent on the carry number, which is really what this iron is all about. You know, the guys who are going to be playing this iron, the tour version, it's generally your sort of low handicappers who want that consistency of hitting a certain pitch distance. You know, generally they're using GPS, laser, you know the yardage, they want to say, right, that is going to hit that far. Sometimes when you go into the more game improvement range, you get some of what I call some freaky shots, where they will just travel that little bit further. Okay, let's hit one more. Yeah, that just, I love it, absolutely love it. As I said on a previous uh, video, these are very high end, they're expensive. Um, and the question I think you've got to, probably a lot of people have asked me is are they that much better performance wise I don't know probably probably not in terms of PXG will obviously say something very different here but there's not that huge jump in performance that you see in the actual price of the golf club but I think when you start to look at the background of PXG what what Bob Parsons has done here in terms of the technologies used with no budget involved here it's just a case of there you go build with the best quality golf club you can possibly do and there's no re restrictions on budget here so they, they just look expensive they look quality the finish on them the feel of them they just look quality so it's probably where that price tag is going to come in there okay let's have a quick look at some numbers and see what the performance is like okay so we're going to have a quick look at some numbers here so averaging at 124 ball speed uh, 17.6 on the launch angle there you can see the one I just missed 12 yards left you can see that's just dropped on its launch that was a bit more of me just shutting the face down a bit of a pull there um, so around that sort of 18 mark I'd say um, in terms of launch which is about that sort of right area for me a little bit of draw now spin it at 7273 so again if you checked out my other video of the middle iron just the 0311 the spin was sort of around a 6 Six mark so this is a little bit more spin here so obviously a player is iron ball aid iron so the spin obviously is one degree more loft than the other iron at um, this is at 32 degrees so but that's that's a good spin number for me I generally struggle with a bit of spin you see somewhere in there at seven six seven five but I think you've got to look at it as an average obviously strike will change these numbers here but at uh, seven two seven three is a good controllable number I know when that's coming into land that's got a lot of control, which is what I want if I'm hitting into a, a tight flag on a maybe a firm green in, in the height of the season. Okay, so looking at average carry at 170, so it's not the longest iron there. I'll 
okay you know I generally hit around the sort of 174 75 mark 7 iron but this isn't a distance iron we've got to remember that this is a blade this is a traditional sort of iron here which isn't all about hitting it out there as far as you can it's all about generate some consistent spin numbers launch numbers uh, ball speed um, and actually hitting a consistent distance number but if you look at down these numbers here from the front to the back you know I'm peaking at 171 dropping to 168 it's only three yards difference between all of those shots that I do like that is what I want as a as a player I want it to be tight I don't want one that goes that 182 or 185 the next one's like 170 you know I want them tight numbers because I, when I draw that iron out on the golf course I want it to go that distance okay now I did catch a couple of these slightly off center you know and they still hit a, a, this sort of desired distance in and the drop-offs are, are very minimal which is which is very attractive okay so really nice iron that for me I'm really liking that the 311T iron from PXG it's not a brutal iron sometimes you get some blades in your hands it's like oh yeah I'm gonna have to hit middle this definitely looks like a blade so that's gonna tick a lot of boxes for guys who want that blade look compact head that workability of ball flight the penetrating ball flight which I'm sort of seeing on those numbers there the launch angle is where I want it you know it's not climbing it's, it looks like it's piercing out there having said that the spin number is quite quite high for me personally but in a probably a right area for this type of iron so again as I mentioned it when it comes into land it's, it's land with a bit of control there which is what I would want but I'm so impressed with the front to back dispersion numbers okay we always talk I think as golfers to left and right dispersion trying to keep it in as narrow as we can but I think ultimately front to back dispersion is as equally as, as, as important um, especially for the guys who are in that low handicap sort of area because they want to know if they can carry that front bunker into the green or they can carry that ledge in the green to hit that back pin position you know that is so crucial and, and, and I'm really impressed with those numbers probably the best numbers I've had in terms of front to back dispersion consistency that I've had with with any iron before so love the feel of it um, I just wish I had some money to buy some um, you know the, the wife might divorce me but whew, that is a serious set of golf clubs I'm, I'm really impressed with them um, yeah just I don't know what else to say just massively impressed um, as I said the price tag is right up there but they do just look quality and that feels beautiful very impressed okay thanks for watching guys and um, please subscribe I'm gonna be doing some more PXG uh, reviews coming short onto my channel we have luckily here um, at Lytham Golf Grad we've been hand selected by PXG to be a fitting authorized fitting center for them uh, and stockists so we have got a lot of options here on the wall you know drives fairways hybrids the irons all the wedges putters um, so we've got full set demo sets of irons so um, you know some guys can take these onto the golf course but um, ultimately we've got the whole fitting system here which is, what, which is why we've been sort of selected here at Lytham um, so you know if you do want to fit in or come and try PXG obviously just comment down below my emails in there contact details drop us a line and we can maybe get you organised to come in through and have a have a little look and a play. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Please subscribe. There's a bit of a link up there somewhere, and um, we'll hopefully catch up very soon.